the mainspring. A mechanical watch is powered by a coiled metal spring, gears machined to microscopic tolerances, and absolutely zero electronics. No battery, no microchip, no circuitry, just metal parts moving in perfect choreography to measure time with accuracy within two to three seconds per day. Which, considering you are strapping a machine to your wrist that was invented before electricity, is borderline miraculous. The mainspring is a thin strip of hardened steel, nearly a foot long, coiled tightly into a spiral and contained inside a cylindrical housing called the mainspring barrel. One end of the spring connects to a central axle called the winding pinion, and the other end attaches to the inner wall of the barrel itself. When you wind the watch by turning the crown, you are tightening this spring around the central axle, storing potential energy. As the spring slowly unwinds, it rotates the barrel, which has gear teeth on its outer rim. These teeth engage with the first wheel in the gear train, transferring power throughout the entire watch mechanism. The barrel is designed to release this energy very slowly. A ratchet wheel and click assembly allows the winding pinion to rotate in only one direction, which prevents the spring from unwinding backward and ensures that that power can only exit through the barrel's geared rim. Without this controlled release, the mainspring would dump all its stored energy in seconds, spinning the gears uselessly fast. Instead, it provides steady torque over the course of 30 to 40 hours, depending on the watch design. The wheel train. The wheel train is the transmission system that converts the mainspring's slow rotation into the precise speeds needed to move the watch hands. It consists of a series of gears, each one turning faster than the last, with each gear carefully sized to produce exact time intervals. In watchmaking terminology, the large gears are called wheels, the smaller gears they mesh with are called pinions, and the shafts holding them are called arbors. The center wheel is driven directly by the mainspring barrel and completes one full rotation per hour. This wheel holds the minute hand, and its 60 minute journey is often divided into minute marks on the watch face. The center wheel meshes with the third wheel, which exists purely as an intermediate gear to maintain the correct ratios throughout the system. The third wheel then drives the fourth wheel, which rotates once per minute in small incremental steps. The fourth wheel carries the seconds hand, and again, marks on the watch face help you see how many seconds have passed during its 60 second revolution. This cascading gear system amplifies speed while reducing torque. The mainspring barrel rotates very slowly with high force, but by the time power reaches the fourth wheel, it is spinning much faster with less force. A typical setup might have the fourth wheel completing 60 rotations for every single rotation of the center wheel, establishing a gear ratio of 1 to 60. The escape wheel sits at the end of this chain, rotating approximately 10 times per minute and connects to the escapement mechanism that controls everything, jewel bearings. The axle of each wheel in the train rests inside a synthetic jewel bearing. These are not decorative gemstones, they are functional components made from lab-grown ruby or sapphire, specifically aluminum oxide with a hardness rating of 9 on the Ma's scale. Only diamond is harder. The reason for using jewels is simple. Friction. Metal pivots spinning inside metal holes create heat, wear, and inconsistent resistance that destroys accuracy and eventually grinds the mechanism to a halt. Even with modern lubricants, metal on metal contact would cause the watch to fail within months. Jewel bearings solve this problem by providing an ultra smooth, nearly frictionless surface for the metal arbors to rotate against. The static coefficient of friction between brass and steel is around 0.35, while sapphire on steel drops to between 0.10 and 0.15. That difference might seem small, but when a wheel is completing hundreds of thousands of rotations per year, it becomes the difference between a watch that keeps time and a watch that becomes a paperweight. The fourth wheel alone makes 1,440 full rotations per day, which adds up to over half a million rotations per year. Multiply that across every wheel in the movement, and you start to understand why jewel bearings are not optional. A fully jeweled mechanical watch typically contains 17 jewels strategically placed at the highest stress points. The balance wheel gets five jewels, two pivot jewels, two cap jewels, and one impulse jewel. The pallet fork gets two pivot jewels and two pallet jewels. The escape wheel, fourth wheel, third wheel, and center wheel each get two pivot jewels. The motion works. The motion works is a separate gear system that performs two critical functions. It allows the watch hands to be freely rotated when setting the time, and it creates a 12 to 1 speed reduction for the hour hand. Since the center wheel and minute hand rotate once per hour, the hour hand needs to make a much slower
your journey, completing one full rotation every 12 hours as it passes by the hour marks on the watch face. This speed reduction happens as power flows from the cannon pinion through the minute wheel to the hour wheel. The cannon pinion is a hollow tube that fits over the center wheel arbor and is driven by friction. The minute wheel is an intermediate gear that bridges the connection between the cannon pinion and the hour wheel. The hour wheel is another hollow tube that fits over the cannon pinion shaft and holds the hour hand. Through precise gear ratios, the hour wheel rotates once for every 12 rotations of the cannon pinion. The clever part is that the cannon pinion and hour wheel are press fit to the pinions that support them. This means they are held in place by friction rather than being rigidly locked. With enough force, they can slip and rotate independently without disturbing the underlying wheel train that drives them. When you pull the crown out to set the time, a mechanism called the keyless works and gauges. The setting lever clicks into an indent on the setting jumper, which then presses against a spring-loaded yoke. The yoke moves a sliding pinion into connection with the time setting gears, allowing you to rotate the hands forward or backward without stopping the watch or damaging the gear train. The escapement and balance wheel. The escapement is where the actual timekeeping happens, and it is the most critical assembly in the entire watch. Its job is to release mainspring power in small, metered increments, while simultaneously keeping the balance wheel oscillating at a precise rhythm. Without the escapement, the mainspring would unwind completely in seconds, spinning the gears uselessly. With it, the watch ticks steadily for days. The balance wheel is a weighted metal ring that swings back and forth around its central axis, returned toward its center position by a spiral spring called the hairspring. One end of the hairspring is attached to the balance wheel, and the other is fixed to the watch frame. Together, the balance wheel and hairspring form a harmonic oscillator that naturally vibrates at a specific frequency, typically 18,000 to 28,800 beats per hour, which translates to 5 to 8 beats per second. This oscillation rate is remarkably consistent, resisting changes in amplitude and maintaining the same period even when the swing gets larger or smaller. The pallet fork and escape wheel form the escapement mechanism itself. The escape wheel is driven by the fourth wheel and has 15 specially shaped teeth. The pallet fork is a lever with two jewels called pallet stones positioned on either side. As the balance wheel swings, an impulse pin mounted on the balance wheel knocks the pallet fork back and forth. Each time the fork moves, one pallet jewel releases an escape wheel tooth from its locked position. The instant the tooth slips free, its specially angled shape delivers a tiny push of power from the mainspring through the pallet fork, which then pushes the impulse pin and launches the balance wheel into another swing. The crown and winding mechanism. The crown is the small knob on the side of the watch that controls both winding and time setting. When pushed in, the crown is in winding mode. When pulled out, it switches to time setting mode. The mechanism that makes this work is called the keyless works, a series of gears connected to the crown stem that change function depending on the crown position. The setting jumper is a spring-loaded component with two indents that lock the crown mechanism in place for each mode. When the crown is pushed in for winding, a gear called the sliding pinion meshes with a set of gears connected to the mainspring arbor. Turning the crown rotates these gears, which wind the mainspring tighter and tighter, storing energy. The ratchet wheel prevents backward rotation, so the spring stays wound until its energy is gradually released through the barrel. When the crown is pulled outward, the setting lever clicks into the second indent on the setting jumper. At the same time, this lever presses against the spring-loaded yoke, which physically moves the sliding pinion out of connection with the winding gears and into connection with the time-setting gears. Now, turning the crown rotates the minute wheel in the motion works, which moves both the minute hand and our hand to the correct time. The characteristic ticking sound you hear from a mechanical watch is made by the pallet jewels as they catch and release the escape wheel teeth. Each incremental rotation of the escape wheel is called a beat. A common beat rate is 21,600 beats per hour, which equals 6 beats per second. The balance wheel can be regulated by adjusting two pins that alter the active length of the hairspring, changing the swing rate and therefore the speed of the entire watch. There's a great video on the screen now. Don't miss it, okay?